An object from interstellar space has been observed to visit our solar system. Humans have been exploring space for decades now. Normally, we're the ones that go visit the far ends of the solar system and beyond to discover things that we can't with a regular telescope. The general idea is that these things exist. They're there in space, and we just have to go and find them. But with the discovery of Oumuamua, all of that changed. In a jaw-dropping twist that sends shockwaves through the scientific community, Neil deGrasse Tyson brings forth the first ever tangible images of Oumuamua. That if you want to think about the future of civilization, you have to include a defense plan against asteroids. The enigmatic interstellar object that has confounded astronomers for years. Join us as we embark on an extraordinary journey, peering into the very fabric of existence, where the mysteries of Oumuamua await their long-awaited unveiling. What is Oumuamua? In 2017, an astronomical event unlike any other occurred. For the first time, we spotted an object that we believe originated beyond our solar system. Its origin was once a source of controversy. Was it a comet, although with a peculiar orbit? Was it an asteroid because it didn't have a noticeable tail? Or was it something completely unique? A visitor from another galaxy and the first instance of an altogether new kind of object? It was named Oumuamua, which means messenger from the distant past in Hawaiian and it became a magnificent discovery as well as a glimpse into what items exist across interstellar space. But one scientist, Neil deGrasse Tyson, enamored with his own notion and ignoring the extensive study done by other experts who specialize in this subject, has gone on a public crusade to persuade the world of the most implausible explanation for this natural phenomenon. Aliens. For the better part of four years, Neil deGrasse Tyson has been all over the media, rallying popular support for a theory that defies scientific proof. Contrary to popular belief, including that found in Loeb's new book, Extraterrestrial, the first sign of life beyond Earth, this is not a possibility worth considering as a scientist. A simple examination of the evidence reveals why. Every object gravitationally impacted by the Sun will follow one of four orbital routes, according to the law of gravity. Circular with an eccentricity of zero, elliptical with an eccentricity larger than zero but less than one, parabolic with an eccentricity precisely equal to one, or hyperbolic with an eccentricity more than one. Oumuamua's Unique Orbital Characteristics Prior to 2017, we had encountered a few items with eccentricities of one or more, but only by a little margin. Values like 1.0001 or such. Even with Jupiter's help, the fastest moving solar system object yet spotted has an eccentricity of 1.06. This relates to an object escaping the sun's gravity, although by a small margin. For Oumuamua, it was quite the opposite. It immediately became clear that this object was something special, as its eccentricity was about 1.2, corresponding to an escape speed that was more like 26 kilometers per second. It was the fastest moving naturally occurring object to leave the solar system with such a speed a phenomenon that would be impossible from even an ideal gravitational interaction with a planet like Jupiter or Neptune, which weren't in the path of Oumuamua at any point. Clearly, it must have originated from outside of our neighborhood. By the time this item reaches interstellar space, it will only be moving at one kilometer per second. Many of these objects, according to models and estimates, should travel through our solar system on a yearly basis, but we wouldn't be able to detect them unless we began taking frequent, practically nightly images of the whole sky with high sensitivity over and over again. That is exactly what the PanSTARRS telescope has been doing for years, and it was this telescope that discovered Oumuamua. It is the first detection of an interstellar intruder. Scientists finally agreed on this label when it came to identifying this item. In fact, the only reason we discovered this one was because it got very near to the sun. It came into our solar system, went around the sun, and flew by Earth as if uh, it was a probe. Which is unusual for an object of this type. It really traveled through Mercury's orbit, which is rarely scanned by our telescope since it's a big no-no to unintentionally risk aiming your telescope toward the sun. It wasn't discovered until it had passed across to the opposite side of Earth's orbit on its journey out of the solar system. We discovered it when it was 23 million kilometers away from Earth. Unusual characteristics and observations of Oumuamua. When it was closest to the sun, it was traveling at incredible speeds, up to 88 kilometers per second, 
or three times the speed at which Earth circled the sun. But we were lucky to have captured it at all. It was tiny, approximately 100 meters long, dim and bright red, comparable to the Trojan asteroids that circle Jupiter. Its color differs from that of known frozen things, failing to match comets, Kuiper belt objects, or even centaurs, and further examinations showed a certain level of boredom in Oumuamua, since it exhibited no molecular or atomic absorption or emission signals. In fact, if it weren't for two peculiar characteristics of this object, there would have been little to notice about it other than the fact that it exists and follows the course we saw. The first unusual aspect of Oumuamua was discovered in October of 2017, shortly after its detection. We only had a brief window of opportunity to make follow-up studies because it was pretty close to Earth but yet traveling away very rapidly, so a number of telescopes set their sights on this cosmic oddball. The brightness of the object fluctuated by around a factor of 15 over a timeline of about 3.6 hours, but not on a regular basis like clockwork. Comets and asteroids may differ by a few percent, or even a factor of 2, but a factor of 15 is unheard of. Models of this object suggest that it is both elongated and tumbling, which would explain its frequent extreme brightness changes. This is a good explanation because, unless there is some mechanism for obscuring the light from this object on one side, such as an interstellar analog of Saturn's two-toned moon Iapetus, or perhaps dust or outgassing, a change in the object's apparent size could explain the large brightness variations. It's not surprising that this thing is tumbling, but seeing an object so fully stretched, like a rock that's been worn for a very long period in a river or ocean, makes this object all the more remarkable. The second strange characteristic appeared as we followed Oumuamua's route out of the solar system. We thought, maybe naively, that it would follow a hyperbolic orbit, as if the only force acting on it was gravity. What we discovered, however, was that a regular, fully hyperbolic orbit did not suit what we saw. It felt as if there was an extra acceleration, as if something undetected was pushing it in addition to gravity's pull. Insights from Oumuamua's discovery and implications. Since its discovery, the astrophysics community has published several publications on Oumuamua, bringing together the lessons we learned and aligning our pre-existing ideas with the new findings to construct a comprehensive picture of what may be lying in interstellar space. A single object, such as Oumuamua, will only get this close to a star in the Milky Way once per 100 trillion years, or nearly 10,000 times the current age of the universe. So, how did we become so lucky to watch it? It's because there are so many of them. According to some calculations, there may be as many as 1025 bodies like this, interstellar interlopers, hurtling across our galaxy. Given the huge quantity of these objects out there, they will travel through our solar system on a regular basis, up to a few times every year. We'll be able to see them if we have the necessary equipment and scan the sky often, exhaustively, pollution-free and at dim enough magnitudes. Many thought Oumuamua was a one-time event. As astronomer Gregory Laughlin described it, this was the time of Oumuamua's life. Borisov, unlike Oumuamua, has a recognizable look to us. So what was the difference between these two objects? We must acknowledge that there might be several answers to that question. Perhaps they aren't that dissimilar, but Oumuamua was too tiny to accurately quantify with the tools we had in 2017. We spotted Borisov as it was entering the solar system, allowing us lots of opportunity to examine it, whereas we only observed Oumuamua as it was leaving. Oumuamua sparks debate among scientists. Scientists have been at war over how to explain its peculiar properties and precise origins since its discovery, with researchers initially labeling it a comet, then an asteroid, before eventually declaring it the first of its kind, a new class of interstellar objects. According to a recent report published by experts at the Harvard-Smithsonian Center for Astrophysics, the elongated dark red object, which is 10 times as long as it is broad and traveling at speeds of 196,000 miles per hour, might have a artificial origin. Oumuamua may be a fully operational probe sent intentionally to Earth's vicinity by an alien civilization, they said in their report, which was accepted for publication in the Astrophysical Journal Letters. Considering an artificial origin, one possibility is that Oumuamua is a light sail, floating in interstellar space as debris from an advanced technological equipment, the paper's authors said, hinting that the object may be propelled by solar radiation. 
Abraham Loeb, professor and head of astronomy, and Shmuel Bealy, a postdoctoral scientist at the Harvard Smithsonian Center for Astrophysics, wrote the study. Loeb has written four books and over 700 papers on themes ranging from black holes to the future of the cosmos, the quest for alien life, and the formation of stars. The article says that similar light sails exist on Earth. Initially, scientists assumed the swiftly moving dim light was a typical comet or asteroid that had formed in our solar system. Comets, in particular, are known to accelerate due to outgassing, a process in which the sun warms the frozen comet's surface, causing melted gas to escape. Oumuamua, on the other hand, didn't have a coma, which is the atmosphere and dust that surrounds comets as they melt. Multiple telescopes concentrated on the item for three nights to figure out what it was before it vanished. The researchers feel that we should look for other interstellar objects in our sky in the future. It is exciting to live in a time when we have the scientific technology to search for evidence of alien civilizations, Loeb remarked in an email. The evidence about Oumuamua is fascinating, but not conclusive. I'll be overjoyed when we get convincing evidence. Assessing Oumuamua's Possible Alien Origins While no concrete evidence has been found to support this claim, the unique characteristics of Oumuamua continue to fuel intriguing theories and imaginative possibilities. Some propose that Oumuamua's peculiar shape and elongated dimensions indicate a purposefully designed spacecraft. Its unusual trajectory and high speed also hint at a possible propulsion system beyond our current understanding. The object's origin from another star system raises questions about potential advanced civilizations in the universe, prompting speculation that Oumuamua could be a probe sent by an alien civilization to explore and study other star systems. Furthermore, the absence of a coma or tail typically associated with comets adds to the mystery surrounding its composition and origin. Oumuamua's tumbling motion, which suggests a non-natural object, further ignites the imagination, resembling how a spacecraft might behave. Oumuamua travels in a complicated tumbling spin as well, but a functional solar sail would have a far smoother route and evident radiation-driven acceleration, according to Jackson. He indicated that the spinning motion of a broken solar sail will be significantly more heavily impacted by radiation forces than apparent. He also stated that the solar sail would be thinner than the authors of the current research indicate. The sail on Icaros is 7.5 micrometers thick and weighs only 0.001 gram per centimeter square, which is 100 times less than their estimate, Jackson explained. A spacecraft and sail combination may have a large net mass, but the sail must be extremely light. Their estimate of how far it might travel before disintegrating would also be modified, but, as I have mentioned, I doubt any viable vessel would deploy its sail in interstellar space. The search for Oumuamua's source and limitations of detection. Due to the inability of solar sails to change direction once launched, there is a possibility of tracing Oumuamua back to its origin. However, the definite source of Oumuamua is still unknown. The task of tracking Oumuamua becomes challenging beyond a certain point due to the motion of stars. Even if an alien civilization were to attempt charting such a long course, they would encounter similar difficulties, aside from debates about their willingness to launch a spacecraft that would take millions of years to reach its destination, as explained by Jackson. Astronomers had limited time to observe Oumuamua, resulting in a lack of substantial evidence leaving room for speculation regarding its nature and origin. Catherine Mack, an astronomer and cosmologist, emphasized that scientists are open to publishing unconventional ideas if there is even a slight chance of their validity. However, they would exhaust all other possibilities extensively before truly believing in such ideas. It is worth noting that the researchers behind the new study have expertise in solar sails leading them to suggest that Oumuamua might resemble one, according to Corin Baylor-Jones from the Max Planck Institute for Astronomy. Baylor-Jones's research on potential Oumuamua origin sites was approved by the Astrophysical Journal in September. Baylor-Jones clarified that the involvement of aliens in this context relies on accepting their assumption, which is not based on conclusive evidence that Oumuamua has a sail-like structure, Additionally, it assumes that such a structure cannot occur naturally. The mention of aliens is minimal in the study, only briefly discussing the possibility that Oumuamua could have been directed towards the solar system. Baylor-Jones expressed no objections to this type of speculative research, finding it engaging and thought-provoking, given the crucial question of the existence of extraterrestrial life.
planned mission to explore Oumuamua in 2028. A potential mission is being considered to commence in early 2028 and reach Oumuamua sometime between 2050 and 2054, depending on the speed and trajectory of the spacecraft as it departs our solar system. In the initial four years of the expedition, the spacecraft would make two orbits around Earth, as well as one each around Venus and Jupiter, utilizing their gravitational forces to gather momentum before heading towards the enigmatic celestial object. To aid the approach towards Oumuamua, solar sail technology, exemplified by the Planetary Society's successful LightSail 2 proof-of-concept mission, would be employed to power the probe. However, the expedition would incorporate a photon sail propelled partly by a laser originating from Earth, similar to the approach proposed by Breakthrough Starshot for their light sail probe, intended to reach the closest star system, Alpha Centauri, within two decades after launch. Alternative teams have also put forth suggestions for missions to Oumuamua, although most of them rely on an Oberth maneuver performed near the Sun. In this scenario, once the probe enters the Sun's gravitational well, its thruster would ignite resulting in significant acceleration. In contrast, the I-4IS team has proposed an Oberth maneuver around Jupiter, which would necessitate a substantial shield to protect against the sun's intense heat and radiation. According to the authors, the mission would closely resemble existing interplanetary missions. However, the launch date must not be earlier than February 2028 due to the current orbital alignment of Jupiter. So what does all of this imply for Oumuamua? Alan Jackson, a fellow at the Center for Planetary Sciences at the University of Toronto Scarborough, expressed his skepticism and criticized the study, stating in an email, I am not convinced at all and believe that the study has significant flaws. As Carl Sagan famously said, extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence, and this paper lacks any evidence, let alone extraordinary evidence. In March, Jackson published a report in the monthly notices of the Royal Astronomical Society proposing that Oumuamua originated from a binary star system or a system with two stars. According to Jackson, the spectral data obtained from Oumuamua resembles that of an asteroid or a comet, rather than a solar sail, which would exhibit distinct differences. The current report suggests that the sail might be covered in interstellar dust, thereby obscuring its true spectral signature. Once a functional spacecraft reaches interstellar space, it is highly likely that its solar sail would be retracted to avoid damage," Jackson added. When you are sufficiently far away from a star, the sail becomes ineffective, and there is no reason to keep it deployed. It would be remarkable if the sail could be deployed again upon approaching the solar system. Even if it were left deployed, dust accumulation would predominantly occur on the leading side, similar to bugs on a car windshield. The investigation into Oumuamua's nature and origin continues to be a subject of debate and speculation within the scientific community. As our understanding of the cosmos expands and technology advances, future missions and observations may shed more light on the mysterious interstellar visitor. Whether Oumuamua will ultimately be identified as an extraordinary artifact of extraterrestrial technology or a natural celestial object, the quest to unravel its enigma serves as a reminder of the ongoing pursuit to understand our place in the universe. Regardless of the final verdict on Oumuamua, the quest for answers persists, driving us closer to unlocking the mysteries of the cosmos and potentially uncovering evidence of life beyond our planet. That's all we have for today. As we venture further into the unknown, we eagerly await the next celestial enigma that will captivate our collective imagination. Thanks for watching and subscribe to get an update on our next video.